how many of you uh, plopped down on the sofa Sunday to watch the season finale of The Walking Dead? Really? That's all? Just a few? Well, I did. A few of you did. Uh, and if you watch that show or a lot of others, at the beginning, there's a full screen that comes up that says, begin your second screen experience, go to amcstorysync.com now. And so that's really what I'm going to talk about today, doing that with our newscast as we go through. Uh, we talked a little bit last year about could we put together a second screen experience for watching television news? Because we know, and in the short time I have, I won't throw a lot of statistics up here, but we know a lot of people are watching newscasts with a tablet in hand, with their laptop on their lap, with their phone, and we know that there's a chance to, to get to grab them and to, uh, to take some of that attention that they're spending split between the screen and the device and maybe tie those two together. And the entertainment industry has, does it, has done it. AMC has done it in a big way. So if you're not a Walking Dead fan, you still surprise me on that. The uh, AM, or, uh, Mad Men is also another of the big one, Breaking Bad, while it was still on, and so on. So AMC, other networks, uh, the Turner networks have done a lot with this as well. So we sat down to figure out, well, how would we do this? How would we put together uh, something that would engage the viewers. We can, we can do it, or we can put together technology to do it, but could we engage them? And so uh, the other challenge I gave myself as I started this was, could we do it cheaply? Uh, because t TV newsrooms don't want to spend a ton of money doing something like this, and I'll talk about the costs and, and the revenue potential at the end, but the one thing I'll say as a given at the beginning was that I thought it had to be done with one producer, that we could take content we were already building, already gathering, and one producer could put this together. And so to get to that point, the spreadsheet that you see back here, I've tried to plug this into iNews, and it frankly still works better than a spreadsheet. I'm going to set this down for just a moment. Um, we built this uh, matrix here. Um, and basically, it looked at, it took the rundown of a newscast. So if you look down the, the left, the greenish column over here, that's a 10 o'clock news from March 17th out of KOMU. And so took that, took every element of that and the timing of it. Uh, I'm doing this after the fact. We would, of course, build this in real time during the day. A producer would build it during the day. And then broke our, our matrix up into two parts. There is this section here, which is center stage. I'll talk about that in a moment. And on this part here, which are the side elements. And Randy, I love your, your video wall here. Very nice to use for something like this. Um, the center stage portion will become obvious as we look at the app, but it's where the main events are going to happen, or at least show up to allow you to go someplace else. And around the side, we put the other, the other bits. So in our center stage portion here, uh, starting from top to bottom as it rolls down, uh, we can do uh, an interactive map, we can do a raw interview, we can do some raw video, we can put up a document, and so on. So we've put these in here. These are the things that would occupy the user's attention more or less one at a time. Off to the side over here, things that'll be around that area. Links to other stories, links to external spots, polling, and bios on the reporters or anchors that we're seeing up there. Uh, as we move down through, each of these come up. And the other thing about the colors that's important to mention as we look at it here is, I said one, one producer could do this. So the, the uh, it's called the side producer, that's been our working title, which is simultaneous interactivity display engine. That's why I side. Uh, so the side producer, puts together everything that's in orange on here. She would go through the day and collect these elements. But other people in the newsroom, the show producer would do things in purple. There doesn't happen to be any on this one. The show PA has some responsibilities. Reporters gather some materials, sports producers, and so on as you go across. So it distributes the effort to put this together across everybody in the newsroom. And again, many of them are already producing this. If we want the raw interviews with two sources here, the, the reporters have that, and we just need to make sure that it gets to where the producer can get, can get her hands on it. And so that's what we put together there. So we have the matrix, and we know what the show is going to look like. And Amanda, if you'd hide that there for a minute. So two things, that bit.ly at the top there, if you're going to want to follow along on your laptop or device, you can go ahead and load that in now. I will say as we do this, this is somewhere south of beta still. So if we all crash it, I may have some of you back out of it here. But you can load that, and I'll have you reload when we start the timed demo here. But we went out and partnered with a company called WatchWith uh, in California, which is doing a lot of the second screen uh, projects for the uh, entertainment industry. We're the only news person they've dealt with yet. And so what you're seeing here on the, on the lower part of the screen is the WatchWith interface. And so the producer goes in, 
and assembles these elements of the show. Each one, you can just hit new here, new event, each one is an event. And so we've got raw video, we've got everything that you saw back on the matrix here. If we were doing this, and this is part of the challenge, if we were timing this to a uh, entertainment show, when they put The Walking Dead together, they have the finished show, and then they put the show in that top window, and they can play in the timeline to where they want the things to, to, uh, to show up in the show. In the newscast, of course, we don't have a finished show, and so we don't use that top window, and it does make the timing a little bit more interesting. So all of our timing is set by uh, the in and out times down here. And so you'll see these all start at zero and then some others that start later right here. So we're building those in and out times anticipating when in the newscast those will come and then the producer while it's on live will change those times if necessary, if something floats in the show or whatever it might be. So uh, I, the show I built, I purposely made a little bit uh, sparse at the top so we've got some time to poke around. So Amanda, if you would, well, let's see, I have to roll the video here. So if you would bring up the iPad, let's give her a moment to do that. Uh, we have a recorded show. This would be live, of course. So to make this work, if you've loaded it on your device, uh, hit refresh when I start the newscast here, and our timing will be, will be more or less on. All right, so it's actually what you're seeing now. And I, before we start it, let me go ahead and talk about the elements, and then we'll go through those. We're actually looking at the end of the show because this one loaded before, and so it will reload back to the top. So center stage up here. Different things will show as we go through there. There's sort of a table of contents here that'll make more sense at the top. Uh, News Sync is how we're branding this. It's not live to the public yet. We're still testing, but it will be before too long. Um, we'll have a table of contents below that. We'll have polling here. We'll experiment with that. We have tweets coming in here, related links here, and bios right here. So, Amanda, if you will refresh that. And I'm going to roll this as soon as I see it refresh. And we're just going to have the sound under so I can talk over it. So here's our newscast rolling over here. And so if you're sitting at home and you're watching the, uh, the newscast and have news sync, now we've gone back to the top. So the first thing we have in center stage here is an interactive map. We've got a couple of stories coming up about uh, downtown development. And we're going to click on that in a moment. So Amanda, if you would click on the map. And with any luck, that's going to open the graphics so that we can um, do this. So now click on any of the blue circles there, if you would. All right, so we have um, a little bit of data, and this one's just reasonably simple here. So we've built an interactive map, uh, and so you can, be, while you're listening to this reporter, and there's a package after it here all about development, you can click on any of these and look at these right here. So this is opened up in a second window. And Amanda, if you go back to the main window there. Um, so that will stay up there. And as I say, I built this. We won't have any other center stage uh, uh, elements here for just a little bit as we go through so we can explore some other parts. Now, do you support more student housing downtown? We have a poll here. So Amanda, pick a, pick a response here. We won't hold you against it if people do that. Okay, click vote, and then you'll see. So we've got real time here. As soon as someone votes, they will get uh, the response of what's going on. And we've got a number of polls through here. So there's some interactivity through, through polling right there. Uh, some of you are voting, I can see, as it goes on. So it will continue. All that stays open. It will continue to update. And it will stay there until the next poll comes up, which will be about five minutes or so, in, so into the show. Uh, <coughs> down below, right now, we just have it set to grab tweets anybody using the KOMU, uh, KOMU news uh, handle here, uh, but we can go ahead and set that to take tweets about news stories or just news sync once we have that out live. Uh, if you want to know a little bit more about some of the uh, stories we've done with the apartments, go ahead, Amanda, and click on that one. Again, it'll open up in another window and it will take you to, uh, to KOMU.com where there's a previous story here where you can read the story or watch the video if you like right there and go ahead and go back. Uh, and if you want to know a little bit about the reporter who, uh, who put this package together, you can click on her link right there. And in this case, she is graduating in May and looking for a job, so if any of you uh, are interested, uh, you can do that. We have our anchor uh, bios. Go ahead and go back to the main page. We have our anchor bios that will uh, will show up here as well. Now, uh, I said I would talk about revenue a little bit more later, but I will just point out here, we've got just a couple of fixed uh, display ads like you'd have on a web page in here. There is a lot of chance for interactivity when we get to the commercial break time of the show. I've got a, a video that will load here. 
instead, but we should be coming up here momentarily on the next uh, center stage item as we go through here. Keep voting if you like. We'll continue to see that, that poll change as it goes on. All right, so there's Nicole that we, we see from there. Um, while we're waiting for the next uh, element to come up here, uh, in terms of the cost of this, it's, it's important to do it with one person. So we've got the cost to a station of one producer. I think it's a, a full-time job or slightly more than a full-time job if you're going to do it um, seven days a week. We've aimed the experiment at the 10 o'clock news because I think that's the time when people are most likely to be um, sitting with something in their lap and doing this. Uh, don't see this as a big morning news item because how do people get ready in the morning? They're on the move. They're listening to the newscast while they walk around as much as they're watching it. So I don't think we're going to have the the attention that we'd want in a morning newscast, maybe at five, maybe at six, maybe at some of those others, but 10 seem to be the natural spot to roll this out. So we need one producer to do this and somebody who would roughly parallel the time schedule that the, the 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock producer has in that shop uh, to put it together, attend the meeting, see what's there, start to build the content, start to pull the elements together. Um, you could really engage people out on the polls, and so you can decide fairly early how you want to write that and, and make the answers as simple or as irreverent as you want to do with that. You know who all your reporters and talent are, so you can start to pull this together. And if you, if you remember back to the uh, watch with uh, bar that we see across the bottom, you can have those elements pre-made uh, to pull in there. You can start to search for the links here to do this. So we have external links too as well. Click on that to the right of the bar there on that command if you can. That they shouldn't be doing with the and it should. System, so over there, time, just to the left of where it says current reporter, click on that. Living where we do. Nicole Niedenberg, KMUH News, Columbia. Didn't do it? Okay. Well, as I say, something a little south of beta. So uh, we should have external links that would go, in this case, to there was a City of Columbia page uh, that had the doc, some of the documents related to this and so on. So a uh, producer can pull that together throughout the day. And then they're really waiting for this raw video to come back and, uh, and put those together. Okay, so now our, our next uh, center stage content is pulled up. This is, a, this is a story about marijuana legalization. And so if we click on that, our video will play here. So you can listen to his whole interview. I think I'm likely, as, in, as we're still developing this, I think I'm likely to have this open in a, in a second window rather than right here. If we were hooked up with audio, though, you'd be able to hear that. So here's the sound bite over here, or here's the entire uh, reporter interview, which runs about four minutes or so uh, that'll run on, on this side. If we open that up in a second window, it will allow, um, we can move the content faster in the, in the main screen. And so you can either stay over there and listen to that, and then when you rejoin the main screen, it will move on and stay in sync with the rest of the newscast. And I think actually it's going to do that to us here in just a moment. So um, I've got five minutes or so roughly left. We're going to let that run in the background, but I'll, I'll go ahead and field some questions. Oh, the other, uh, the other thing on cost I started to say was uh, we have the cost of one employee to put this together. Uh, there, there was the development cost of the app, which uh, we did, and I call it an app, but it's actually a web page so that you can do it on a tablet or on a computer uh, phone. It's not terribly uh, uh, satisfying to use on a phone, so I think it's more, you need slightly bigger uh, room right there. So we had some development cost on that, and we had Delta Systems, a local developer, put that together. Uh, the other thing would be um, Watch With has a monthly fee, and it's a little steep. It's $3,500 a month for the Watch With um, support on this to put it together. I think the, uh, uh, so you could probably develop that part of the app on your own. Uh, we went out to find something existing, so we wouldn't have to spend a lot of time on that. So I'll take questions as that continues to go on. Amanda, you can, can click around as things pop up. What about it? What about if someone wants to watch it on demand if they TiVo'd the newscast? Uh, that's a good question. Right now we have it uh, scheduled to run. You're, you're able to load it because we gave you a test site to go to to do it. So we could archive it and do it that way. Right now we talked about doing it as a live only because we want to drive live viewership. That's really what the AMC does. They want to drive live viewership because that's where their commercials are. And so we talked about doing a live only. So if you went to it when it wasn't on, there'd be a countdown screen that said news sync starts in eight hours and two minutes or something like that. And so that's what we've got built there for now. But we may, we may have a chance to, uh, to do that. As you might guess, as we started to put this together and we sat down to brainstorm a little bit about it, we uh, um, had about 
five projects worth of stuff that we wanted this to do, and so we tried to make it simple enough to, uh, to pull off right here at the beginning. Stacy, the, the, the technology is very impressive, and the proof of concept here is remarkable, but what research do you have that shows that users actually want to do this during a newscast? Um, I mean, we were just, uh, Laura was just saying, you know, asking millennials how many of them even watch a live newscast that late at night. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if this would drive them to watch, but uh, you obviously have research that makes you think they will. I, I don't have research that says they want to do this during a newscast. We know from anecdotal evidence and the ability to earn a little bit of revenue from the entertainment side that people are doing this. Again, to drive, as we said here, drive live viewing, so you get those commercial hits, and to engage people. And we know that the numbers of people who have either downloaded or participate in the entertainment uh, experiences is quite high uh, relative to, to, not to viewership, but relative to doing other things at that time. Uh, one of the things that we're, and it, we're right at that stage now, is to test this in some focus groups before we turn it loose on the air um, and do not only usability, but get some feedback from users to say, well, that's dumb, I wouldn't do that, but can you make it do this instead? So this is the more or less the original concept with some modifications from that, but we really haven't turned it loose on regular people yet. It's all been journalists, frankly, looking at it, and so got a little ways to go on that. All right, so we had a commercial here, and I'd mentioned before, the, the chance for interactivity in the uh, advertising sphere is pretty much untapped at this point, too. And because we're doing this in partnership at KOMU, the, the sales team out there and the sales manager um, and I were, frankly, just talking yesterday about what clients he might have in here. We, we stuck these in here just because it's a kind of a known and easy advertising place, and he could sell those in a second once we put this out here. But I challenged him, I said, what are you going to do during the commercial breaks? Because you've got a lot of opportunity in there to do that. And you can have video, as I've put up here, to go through it. Or you could have um, some sort of interactive mapping or shopping experience or whatever it might be. So uh, like most TV salespeople, he wanted something in his hand to go out on the street with. So we've just reached that point that he has it. And so I'll be interested to see what he does with that. Because I think for any station to consider it, it's got to obviously cover the cost of the employee who's going to put it together, uh, whatever other software costs we have, and then make a tidy profit on top of that. And so that's really the next challenge. Do you see that uh, advertising is uh, supporting the ad that's on uh, the newscast? I, I, I think it is. I'm usually the last guy anybody's going to ask about advertising strategy, but the, uh, I think it makes sense that you sell it to somebody who's buying newscast time and then give them an extra enhanced experience with their advertising as opposed to, to competing, which is really what I, what I had up here. What's our poll now? Are they doing enough? Amanda, make a vote. Oh, she's kind of harsh. Let's see how we're doing. Any other questions? Oh, a lot of people. All right. Hey, real quickly before before I let you go, um, I, I want to put a couple of people on the spot. Victor Hernandez, real quickly. Do you, what do you what do you see here that uh, in terms of a second screen that that you like? Yeah. Hey guys. Uh, so so yeah, this is really cool. Stacy and I we Stacy showed this to me a number of months ago, and it it, it, it it's incredible to you know see the evolution and getting very close to a, to a big release here this year, I'm sure. And so, you know, at, what, what we talked about, you know, a number of months ago is still sort of where I see things today and going down the right path. Uh, there's certainly enough unknowns and uh, moving variables where uh, the, the, the end goal, what that end zone is going to look like uh, a year from now in terms of the metrics and success and uh, in the engagement, which is key, right? That's a big X factor on on, on what the interactivity will look like and, and how, how this will gain some traction or not. But, uh, but, but I love the, the, the experimentation and the, and the, uh, the interactivity sort of uh, opportunities that are going to be made available. Um, you know, where it goes and some of the learnings and takeaways and the iterative cycles and processes of the changes and the new features that you guys implement post-launch are all things that we should be following and paying attention to, but, but it, it seems to me that there's a very smart foundation here that's being positioned, and uh, we'll, we'll learn collectively as we move forward. 
I think I, I was pretty serious about that, you know, when a lot of news people said to put something together, it may not really be what the public wants, and so we've got a lot to learn as we roll this out to some focus groups. And if anyone has any questions for Stacy, he'll be around here for a little bit. Stacy Wolfel, thank you, Stacy. Thanks.